friends, welcome to the Alcanian Reptile Girl. This is Higgins, my beautiful little hognose snake. Higgins is a rear fanged venomous snake, and in past videos, recent ones actually, I've talked about the fact that though he is technically venomous, he is harmless. Well, I happened to have a conversation with someone on Reddit that changed my perspective a bit, and I'd like to share it with you. It made me realize that I may have been doing a disservice to people watching my videos to learn about snakes, to hognose snakes, and other rear fang venomous snakes. Stick around and I will explain why. So I was on a subreddit that I really like called What's This Snake? If you're not familiar with it, basically people post pictures of decays brown snakes and water snakes asking if they are rattlesnakes or cottonmouths. Occasionally, though, there will be pictures of unknown snakes people find that they need identified and they ask for help from reptile people to ID it. Like this striped keelback, a rear fang venomous snake from Asia. They very rarely bite and with the fangs in the back, getting the venom into someone if they do bite is very unlikely. While venomous, they are considered harmless in their native range and children often play with them. In that post, someone had cautioned against letting the snake chew on them, you know, because of the venom. They shared that they were doing their dissertation on venomous snakes, which involves actually collecting venom from snakes in the field. How cool is that? That's a dream job for me right there. Anyway, we had an interesting discussion for a bit in the comments. They talked about misconceptions with rear fang snakes and how they don't get the respect that they deserve. There is significantly less understanding on the potency of rear fang venomous snakes than there is with front fang venomous snakes like rattlesnakes or cobras. Their work showed that a lot of rear fang snakes thought to be harmless have venom with a similar potency to the front fanged highly venomous snakes, but are not given their due respect and are dismissed as harmless. Think of it like this. If you have two doses of nasty venom, one in a syringe and another in an IV drip, if you take that syringe and inject it all at once, you're in for a wild ride. But with the IV drip, you're going to need to leave it in for a long time before enough venom gets into you to be a problem. In our analogy here, vipers and elapids are the syringe, dumping in a huge amount of venom at a time. Rear fang snakes are our IV drip, working the venom in drop by drop. If we don't give them enough time to get it into us, we're A-OK. -okay. But if we intentionally get bit and allow them to work their venom in, let's say as a joke, or an internet challenge, or to be tough, or to prove the snake is totally safe. Basically, if we don't show them the appropriate respect, it could be a very bad day. Like this 20 year old who was envenomated by a hognose snake, like Higgins, and had to be treated for severe pain, swelling, blistering, and thrombocytopenia. Which is a huge drop in blood platelets that, if severe and untreated, can cause fatal internal bleeding and hemorrhaging. Thrombocytopenia can be a symptom of serious envenomation from rattlesnakes and other vipers. Getting it from a hognose snake? Who knew? Downplaying their venomous potential is a problem. I'm guilty of this too. Take a look at this picture I posted on Instagram and Reddit. This is my baby albino hognose snake giving my dad a chomp. Cute, right? One of the primary goals of my channel is to help people be less afraid of snakes. So a cute little moment like this is a perfect way for even ophidiophobes to go, oh, and this is played off as harmless. My dad did have a slight tingling in his finger for a couple of hours, but he was perfectly fine. Although he did play up the fact that he was bitten by a venomous snake, but that was just to get out of shoveling the driveway. My point is that I should not have played this off as a joke or no big deal. While my dad was fine and the risk of envenomation was extremely low, this was a venomous snake bite and should have been treated with some more urgency. Letting Maggie hang on for long enough for me to grab my phone and snap a bunch of cute pictures at different angles and joking about it on Instagram and Reddit was a mistake. Neither my dad nor I gave Maggie or her venom the respect that they deserved. Here's the deal. I characterized Higgins and Maggie as harmless. They're not. They have venom and by dismissing that, 
I have unintentionally misled you and not given hognose snakes the respect that they deserve. Are they dangerous? No. Not unless I am intentionally trying to get envenomated, but that does not mean that they are harmless. In the right circumstances, their venom could injure me. This does not mean that hognose snakes don't make great pets. No, they absolutely make great pets. What it does mean is that we should be mindful and respectful of their capabilities. Playing up a hognose or other rear fanged venomous snake bite as cute or, oh look, he did a munch, normalizes something that we should be treating with more respect. Even if you experience no ill effects like my dad, others emulating this behavior might be seriously injured. To my anonymous Reddit friend, thank you for giving me an interesting perspective. I've learned a valuable lesson. Safety first! I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have suggestions for other video topics you would like me to talk about, put them down there too. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the bell. I post reptile content daily, mostly on my Instagram, so follow me there and on Facebook and TikTok. That's what the kids are into these days after all. But most importantly, remember to nurture and respect all nature. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Topia. Okay, that's wrong. So do thrombocy. One second, I'll try that again. I was gonna say Cyclops. And thrombocytopiana. Pina. Pina. And thrombocytopiana. I don't know why I keep putting Anna in there. The huge drop in blood plates lip. Which is a huge drop in blood plates plate. Plate slits? Plate lips. Plate lips. <laughs> it's like platypus. Platypus have platelets. <laughs> I love platypuses. Oh, they're so cute. Platypi? Platypose. <laughs> Which is a huge drama. <laughs> now I'm just think thinking of platypus. Susus. Hippopotamuses. Oh, hello, you're back. Which is a huge drop in blood platelets. <laughs> so... <laughs> yes, your body starts melting from the inside out in great time. <laughs> yes. Uh... Can cause fatal internal bleeding. <laughs> yes, death by liquefaction. It's great. <laughs> Welcome to your Canadian Reptile Girl. We have some? Mm -hmm. Have a little sneak treat. Don't tell mom.